So today we're going to be talking about how to Google like a boss. We're going to be going over some tips and tricks to help you with your research and how to use the search engine Google and better understand what you're looking at when you research online. Let's get started. Now another thing to think about is something called Google Scholar. When you're doing major research and regular Google just won't cut it and you want to find really good scholarly articles, then all you have to do is just go into Google Scholar. So on your main Google search bar, just type in Google Scholar and it will automatically change you over to a completely different browser. This is going to allow you to look for specific articles and things that have been researched and are credible. So all you have to do is go to Google and type in Google Scholar and eventually it'll come up with this. So it looks just like regular Google, but you'll notice it's a scholar here at the bottom. So let's pretend that I need to look for technology in education. That would definitely be something I would need to do some pretty hardcore researching on. So as it searches for technology in education, it is going to come up with results. And you'll see that up here it tells me there's a book you can see over here that I've got some PDF options, which is awesome. This is, again, where it comes in handy for you to kind of be paying attention to what the Google search actually spits out. So if I were to click on this one, for example, it's a PDF. I actually do know this organization, ASCD. It's, a, it's one that teachers use all the time. However, if I am carefully, closely paying attention, it was written in 1984. That is not at all helpful. So I can go over here to the left-hand side and I can click on that I want something more recent. So I'm clicking that I want it to be ordered since 2015 and then go down from there. So now I'm looking at items that are very, very recently published and I look over here and I see that this is from the University of California, Santa Cruz. Notice it's got that EDU extension domain extension at the end, and it's a PDF. This looks like something I could really use. So usually as I open a PDF, there's, you know, who knows how long it is, but I can tell right away that it's a fairly lengthy document. Looks like it's got lots of sources cited, even right here at the very beginning. I might also want to take a look at the end to see what resources or bibliography they have listed. Holy cow, it is a huge document. And as I get to the bottom, I can see all of their references. Now these are potentially things that I could continue looking for in my Google search, depending on if I feel like it has a good title or could help me. So look at how many resources I can eventually get just from this one article alone. So this was a jackpot. So take a look at that when you have time. Also, don't forget to mine the bibliography and resource section when you find a really good article. Um, when you are doing something and you usually at the very, very bottom of the article, it will list a bibliography or more often than not recently, I've seen something where it says resources. Click to the bottom of the article or scroll to the bottom of the article and see if any resources or bibliography is listed. If it is, go to those different sites. Use those in your search to see if it has more information on the topic that you're actually looking at. This is a really valuable tool that a lot of people don't even think about. And you can even find resources on good credible sites, even on Wikipedia. So we can't necessarily discredit Wikipedia all on its own, but you know, if you're looking at a Wikipedia uh, particular article and you scroll to the bottom and you see that they actually have resources, go to those resources. That's gonna tell you whether or not the Wikipedia article itself is actually a good resource. Another thing I wanted to talk about was Creative Commons. So Creative Commons is basically a place where you can go to use tools from the internet. And it could be anything from music to pictures, um, all sorts of stuff that's been labeled free to use, meaning that people have created these images and music files and other documents that are free for anybody on the internet to use. So um, there's different search tools in Google to allow you to search for things that are free to use. Or you can also go to searchcreativecommons.org to find images and other projects that are free to use um, in anything that you're actually working on. So let's say you're making or you're asked to make an iMovie with your teachers and they ask you to include pictures. You really need to start using Creative Commons or using the tools in Google to find images and pieces that are free to use and that way you don't necessarily have to cite them. But if you do use images that are not free to use, you need to make sure that you give credit to where you got those images. I'm looking for tips and tricks 
and I'm wanting to do images. So obviously I'm going to type in, you know, tips and tricks, and then I'm going to go to images on Google. Now these images look great, but I also know that not all of these are going to be available. What if I just change it to tips? And then I go into search tools. Now right underneath search tools, it says usage rights. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to label for reuse, modification, non-commercial use, any of these. As you click on those, you'll see that your output drastically changes and these are going to be considered images that are free to use.